The oldest abortion clinic in the United Kingdom has shut its doors. The center in Birmingham, England opened in 1969. It closed late last year. Pro-lifers had prayed outside of the clinic for decades. Catholic priests and religious sisters also often stood outside the abortion clinic offering prayers. Joining me now via Skype to discuss the closing is Robert Colquhoun, director of the International Campaign for 40 Days for Life. Robert, thank you so much. Welcome to the show. So what was the official reason given for the clinic closing? Well, Mary Stokes uh, did not bid for their contract to be renewed. Uh, they argued that they weren't being paid enough money, but we've had pro-lifers who've been praying outside that clinic for uh, decades now and almost 50 years to the day uh, this Mary Stokes abortion center that was doing up to 10,000 abortions a year has amazingly closed. So some people would say it was prayer. Um, the abortion providers would argue that it was about money. But we've seen over 100 babies that have been saved from abortion outside this, uh, this abortion center during a 40 Days for Life campaign. It's been absolutely incredible. Robert, tell us about the uh, prayer campaign. Who participated and did it change anyone's mind about abortion or having one? Well, um, under the 40 Days for Life banner, there's been a vigil there since 2011, twice a year. And it's been an incredibly effective campaign organized by Isabel Vaughan Spruce, who has had exemplary leadership there, incredible work at going on to lead the March for Life in the United Kingdom. We've had the current Archbishop Longley, who's participated in the vigil there for year, years. Um, Britain's first canonized post-Reformation saint, Cardinal Newman used to live just around the corner, uh, but we've heard of hundreds of people who changed their minds, like Danny and Carla, who walked into that centre like it was a coffee shop. They gave their testimony at the March for Life last year in the UK, and uh, they're one of the greatest fans of 40 Days for Life in the UK. We've now seen five abortion centres close in 10 years of ministry in the UK. We've seen over a 1,000 women who are scheduled for an abortion choose life for their unborn child. So it's been an incredible, incredible experience. Mary Stokes only bought that center uh, after it was rebranded, that rebranded the building after the previous owners agreed to a sex selection abortion. So we've seen uh, hundreds of people particip participate, priests, religious, uh, lay people, young people, old people. Uh, it's been like seeing God's, God's grace in action, being, uh, being on the pavement or the, uh, the sidewalk outside the abortion center. We've seen ambulances arrive there. Um, but the pro-life movement is all about transformation, changing hearts and minds, saving lives, impacting eternal souls. And it's a great campaign, 40 Days for Life. Um, it's when local people, when the community gets together to organize prayer and to show that there's a love in the community can help anyone choose life for their unborn child. That's when miracles happen. And, and many miracles are happening in the United Kingdom right now in the pro-life movement. This is one of our biggest Almost 50 years to the day this abortion center closes. This is something that can happen in, in your community. So, um, you know, God is working through more than 500 cities where 40 Days for Life is being organized this Lent in 2020. So go onto our website and have a look, get involved in this campaign. Uh, it's God at work on the pavement or sidewalk outside abortion centers. Well, absolutely amazing. Uh, quickly, we don't have much time left, but what's next for 40 Days for Life in the UK? Well, it's a really exciting time. We've got 13 vigils around the United Kingdom. That's the largest number we've ever had. There are a total of 100 abortion centers in the United Kingdom. We also have a Supreme Court case where one of the mothers who chose life uh, outside Ealing, uh, one of the abortion centers in London, she's taking the local council to court saying that uh, the buffer zone is preventing pro-lifers from expressing their opinion and offering help to mothers like herself. So we're going to see a Supreme Court case regarding whether buffer zones are legal or not. So it's always an exciting time in the pro-life movement. Uh, the bigger picture is that Britain continues to pay and export abortion around the world, including to countries where abortion is illegal. So uh, I really hope that we can see Mary Stokes defunded internationally. Um, we can expose some of their business in other countries, which is happening illegally and that we can tap into some of the pro-life resources in Africa and to reach out to many countries where abortions are happening illegally. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we hope to talk to you again. Thanks again. Thanks so much indeed.